hello cavers and welcome back to another tutorial this is going to be the making of the cutest spring dress i have made yet i love this dress for many reasons the color the fit the cut is just so cute i've decided to split this project in two and in the first half i'm going to be showing you how to create the sewing patterns from scratch i work from my measurements and i highly recommend you work from yours or that of your client for the best outcome. So the first part of this video, I show you how to take your measurements, how to make the sewing patterns. And then in the second video, I show you how to cut onto fabric, stitch everything together, fit it on myself and the final product at the end. Now, huge thanks to Darling for sending me this fabric. I'm going to link her Instagram and her website down below. This print is so cute. I love pink. Pink is one of my favorite colors. It's scurly, it's cute. It's very spring appropriate and something I, I know I know I would wear in the summer for like a summer wedding or on holiday or for like a nice brunch with the girls the dress came out mm, 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 mm. so so good if you guys do enjoy this project please give it a thumbs up don't forget to tag me on your recreations on social media and let's get straight into this I'm going to be working with this pink satin print this is like a fuchsia and baby pink combo this was gifted to me by darling brink i'm going to link her website down below so you can check out her work i also have myself a long invisible zip this one is about 50 five centimeters and then i got lining because i plan to actually wear this dress like for events and i want to be comfortable while i have it on now i'm going to show you guys some measurements that i think will come in really handy when you're making your own patterns these are just some of the measurements i worked with i'm going in here to measure across my shoulder this would help you to plan the top half of the dress and in addition to that i went in to measure around my bust with my measuring tape i'm just going around the fullest part of my bust like so and then i'm measuring around my waist sort of like the narrowest part of my waist and mine is above my belly button after measuring my waist i'm going to go to go in to measure the vertical distance from my shoulder to my bust line this varies from person to person so i always recommend you work with your measurement or that of your client for the best outcome after that i'm going here to measure the vertical distance from my bust line to my waistline and then i'm going to measure from my waistline to my hip line like so since this is a dress i would need to measure around my hip line when you take measurements just ensure that the measurement allows you to sit breathe and be comfortable in the garment so you can add a little bit of ease i'm also going to decide on how long i want my sleeve to be i want mine to be somewhat three quarter so i decided on 10 inches for that I'm going to start off with planning the front dress pattern and then work my way to the back, the sleeve and then the skirts towards the end of this video. I've drawn a long vertical line and on top of that line I'm drawing a short horizontal line and I'm going to plan my dress design downwards. Now from that top line I'm marking the vertical distance from my shoulder to my bust and then the vertical distance from my bust to my waist and then from my waist to my hip. Once I have those points marked on the paper, I'm going to use my set square to square them across. So I have horizontal lines that cut across like so, and I'm planning half of my front here. So the vertical line at the bottom of the screen is my center front line. I'm going to come to my shoulder line and mark half of my across shoulder, and then mark a front neckline width of 3.5 inches. I'm going to drop the outer edge by half an inch so that helps me to make my shoulder seam which is typically slanted because our bodies are slanted around that side. Now I'm going to go on and mark three inches above my bust line so that is how deep my neckline is going to be. This I ended up actually making a lot deeper when I made the dress but for now let's just keep it like this. You can make yours higher or lower just work with a length that you are comfortable with. Moving to the bust line, I'm going to mark a quarter of my bust measurement plus half an inch ease. This way I am comfortable in this piece and I'm going to connect that point to the top shoulder edge to make the front arm curve. I'm going to move on to the waistline and mark a quarter of my waist measurement plus one inch for the waist dart and half an inch for 
the waist is and then i'm going to move on to the hip line and mark a quarter of my hip measurement plus half an inch is these i'm going to connect together to create the side seam of the front of the dress and it typically would just go from the bust to the waist and then to the hip in such a way that it may mix the shape of my body so yours may look different from mine and that is totally fine and I'm going to go to the waistline and mark half of my nipple to nipple measurement and then draw a vertical line that cuts across like so because along that vertical line I'm going to be marking away the waist dart. Before drawing in the waist dart, I'm just going to draw in a curved seam that sits roughly three inches below the bust line. So it goes from that V point to that three inch point and then to the side seam. So it makes a curved shape that goes under the bust mine is three inches because i measured from my nipple to like right under my bust so measure yours as well if you wanted to go underneath i it's a pet peeve of mine if seams like that don't go underneath my bust so just be sure that yours sits in the way that you like now i'm going in here to draw in my waist out as mentioned earlier on and mine is going to start one inch below the bust line and it's half an inch on both sides of the vertical line that we drew earlier on and it is seven inches below the waistline these points i'm going to connect together to make the waist dart on the front of this dress plan I'm just going to quickly add a notch on this side connecting the top to the bottom before going to mark one inch below the hip line on the center front edge and three inches above on the side to create the V shape that this dress design has. You can make yours as dramatic as you like. Just know that the lower you drop the V and the higher you lift the side, the more dramatic the effect is going to be on the bottom of the dress. Now that's the front plan done. This I'm going to be using to trace off the different pattern pieces of the front so i'm going to trace off the top half that has a curved seam and then the bottom part is going to have two panels on both sides of the dart now using my pattern master my marker pen i'm just tracing onto another sheet of paper this particular side which is the front top it's the side that has a shoulder the neckline and it has the curved seam that goes along the bottom of my bust i'm going to also transfer that top edge of the dart i'm going to be gathering that into that seam you can stitch it away if you like but i think i'll just gather away that excess so there is no extra fabric that i don't want there after tracing it off i added my seam allowance my notches my grain lines and i've cut out my pattern piece i'm going to essentially repeat the same thing for the middle piece that sits on the front this would be cut in the fold so it has one piece and doesn't have a seam right to center front and then i'm going to repeat the same for the side panel that is going to be connected to the middle panel and then joined on to the top of the front so these are the pattern pieces that you will need to make for the front of the dress but i'm going to essentially use the same front plan to create the back patterns everything is more or less the same there are a few changes for the back the arm curve is not as deep and then i'm going to be reshaping the center back edge and changing the shape of that on that bust curve now i'm just drawing with a different color of marker pen so i don't confuse myself so i know what changes i'm making i would say the back dart is extended upwards to meet the new seam that sits on the back of the dress it's the same height in terms of like downwards and then i'm going to go to the center back edge and shape it in by roughly half an inch this prevents a uh, zip bulge from forming on the back of the dress and then i'm really going to curve outwards to connect to the rest of that center back edge after adding a notch on this new seam that is going to be on the back i'm essentially just going to trace off a top back pattern a side pattern and a center back pattern so i should have three patterns for the back of the dress this way when everything is traced off onto pattern paper seam allowance added and cut onto fabric i have my puzzle pieces ready to be stitched together to make the back of the dress I would say a zip is going to sit on the center back so you would need to add a zip allowance on there as well so that 
is how you get in and out of the dress. I have seen this dress design done in a corset style. So people actually will add, add like a lace up detail, maybe halfway and add zip on the bottom edge. So that's another like feature that you can consider to do for your own dress design. Now these are all of my back dress pattern pieces. With these out of the way, I'm going to go ahead to focus on work on the sleeve. For the sleeve pattern, I am going to use my plan and I've cut out a big sheet of paper and folded it in half and the edge to the left side of the screen is actually a folded edge and I'm going to be assuring that the distance from that folded edge to the very point where I start to trace off the front arm curve is at least half of my around bicep measurement and I'm going to trace it off like so mark where that six inch point is or the halfway point is on the fold of the paper and then open it up and trace off the other side of the arm curve which is the back in this case so i've traced off the front i'm tracing off the back and i'm essentially going to connect the dash lines together on both sides and then turn my pattern master to draw in the sleeve head this is like a very quick and cheat way to make sleeve patterns that it kind of works with the plan that i've made this from so once i have the sleeve head in place i'm going to transfer my notches and then mark my sleeve length mine is 10 inches because i wanted it on sort of like a three quarter length dimension and then the hemline width is at least my around elbow dimension this we're going to be slashing and spreading so it doesn't really have to be accurate but i like to have a base that at least sits right on my body so once that is all drawn in seam allowance added notches transferred i'm going to divide this pattern right through the middle and i'm going to be cutting it out and slashing through that middle point I'm going to be slashing from the hemline all the way to the sleeve head because I want to add the volume on the bottom of the sleeve. This I'm going to spread by 12 inches. The wider you spread this, the more dramatic the flare would be and the more flowy it would sit on your body. This you can also spread as multiple panels. So I've just cut my pattern in two. You can cut yours in four and six to really spread the volume around the sleeve if you wanted. But for this one, I've just cut it right in the middle and I'm adding in 12 inches along the hemline. That I'm going to be connecting together to have a curved hemline that connects one side to the other. So I have like a fully connected sleeve pattern that I work with. I'm also going to be evening off the sleeve head since we've spread it in such a way. We want to have like a nice clean finish on the top. And then I'm going to cut off any excess paper that I don't need on the top and on the bottom of my sleeve pattern to have everything ready to cut onto fabric. My final pattern piece is for the skirt, which goes on the bottom of the top pattern that we've made earlier on. And to ensure this works, I'm just going to go in to measure that slanted V-shaped waistline that we made on the plan. And once I have that measured, I'm going to take note of that measurement. And I want to create a rectangular piece that is at least twice of that measurement and it's the length that I want. Now, I want my skirt to be 12 inches uh, this design you can have it as a mini or a maxi or a midi just work with whatever you prefer once i have that 12 inch length marked i'm going to draw in the hemline of my skirt and then draw in the side this piece i'm actually going to cut on a fold so it gives me enough material to gather back into the bottom of the top of the dress i've gone in to add my seam allowance my grain line annotations and i'm just cutting out the skirt pattern like so you can cut this straight onto fabric but because i just kind of want everything to be clear and easy to follow i've done the pattern piece for you guys so you have an idea of what it looks like now these are all of the patterns i ended up with for this project i'm going to be using the same patterns to cut the lining as well so i don't need to make a different batch of patterns for the lining of this dress but now that i have all my patterns done i'm going to go ahead to use them to make my dress 
in the next video i'm going to be showing you guys how i use this to cut my fabric how i stitched everything together fit it on my body and then i also made some changes to customize the dress to my body this is something that you have the freedom to play around with with the length of your gown with the length of the skirt with the length of the sleeve so you have an outcome that you're happy with but i hope to see you guys in the next video do give this one a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i'll see you in my next one bye Small city